Hello everyone, welcome to this week's video from Culture Katha. Most of us are familiar with the story about Krishna slaying Narakasura and this is the mythological event that we celebrate as Naraka Chaturdashi which forms part of the five day long festival of Deepavali. But did you know that uh, Krishna's slaying of Narakasura was not the reason why we celebrated Diwali in ancient times? Although the story of Narakasura is narrated in the Bhagavata Purana, it does not figure in the Ramayana and the Mahabharata, which are older texts. So it appears that the Narakasura story became popular in more recent times. So what is Naraka Chaturdashi and how did we celebrate it in ancient times? As you would know, the word Naraka means hell and it was believed that if one were to die on this day, one would go straight to Naraka. So all attempts were made to keep death at bay on this date. And how did we do it? By pleasing Yama, the god of death. In fact, the attempts to appease Yama starts on Trayodashi, that is the previous day. This day is commonly known as Dhanteras or Dhanatrayodashi, which is celebrated as Yamadeep Dan in several parts of India. On this day, 13 lambs are lit and placed facing the southern direction, which is the direction of Yama and prayers are offered seeking his blessings. There is also another myth associated with the netherworld or Naraka which is believed to be ruled by King Bali. It was believed that the merits one accrues from performing wrong actions such as charity to the undeserving or uh, yagnas performed without making the necessary gifts or improper performance of shraddhas or ceremonies for the departed would end up strengthening King Bali of the underworld. Therefore, on the day of Chaturdashi, it was considered important to perform meritorious deeds so that no merits accrued to King Bali. So it was common for people to make generous gifts including fruits and money to friends, relatives and even strangers. So it appears that Naraka Chaturdashi was celebrated as a day when people overcame deaths or entering hell by appealing to Yama and doing all the righteous things. But the most important ritual of the day, which remains in practice even today, is the mandatory oil bath to be had before daybreak. Come to think of it, the oil bath comes across as a strange custom because our scriptures positively prohibit oil baths on festival days. Oil baths are restricted to days of Shraddha when we pay obeisance to our dead ancestors. This holy bath to be had in the wee hours of the morning was so important that the festival itself was referred to as Naraka Chaturdashi Snanam. Snanam meaning bath in Sanskrit. The bath is equated to having a dip in the Ganga, the holy river of the Hindus. The bath was probably important because of its purifying property for people who believed that they had crossed the threshold of death and come out safe and alive. Maybe in a sense, the story of Narakasura's death symbolizes our own victory over death and hell. Anyway, after the bath, new clothes are owned to usher in auspiciousness and firecrackers burst to ward off all evil. It's also important to note that no puja to any deity is performed on this day. Amavasya or new moon day that comes after Naraka Chaturdashi is also considered an important day to offer worship to our ancestors. So it appears that beginning three days from Trayodashi to Chaturdashi to Amavasya were solemn days for remembering the dead and to commemorate our victory over the threat of untimely death. But how did this day emerge into a big bohemian festival that is celebrated today? Of course, we can never say for sure, but according to one theory, this change possibly happened during the rule of the Vijayanagar emperors. By the middle of the 15th century AD, large parts of South India had come under the Vijayanagar rule. And the later Vijayanagar rulers, who were worshippers of Vishnu, encouraged the custom of Lakshmi Puja among their people, which probably went on to alter the solemn nature of this festival.
in our childhood we listened to the story about rama's return to ayodhya and how his subjects lit lamps in their homes to receive him although this cute little story flourishes in north india and the oral tradition we do not find any textual references supporting it on the other hand the custom of lighting lamps seems to connect to the idea of ancestral worship yet again lights offered on this day were believed to destroy past sins and liberate souls from hell in fact the skanda purana says that men should take up fire brands to light up the path for their ancestors who are in hell so that they can see their way out the lamps also serve to light up the path of the ancestors who are on their way to heaven of course the significance of naraka chaturdashi has changed over time with this festival merging into the festival of lakshmi the goddess of riches and prosperity the nature of the festival continues to evolve and today it has turned into a big consumerist mela thanks to the great indian festival campaigns run by american capitalists friends remember times change people change stories change too the old ones die and new ones come up in their place this process of change is unstoppable and endless proving to us again and again that in india we don't believe in one narrative of anything folks hope you enjoyed watching this video today on culture katha we don't just tell you stories we also tell you why these stories are told unbiased views based on hard research is what sets us apart from the other channels do support this unique initiative by liking sharing and subscribing a gentle reminder to my subscriber friends please do remember to press the bell icon to receive updates on video uploads till we meet again Tata bye bye take care and a very very happy diwali to you all